a very exciting journey of Chandrayaan-3. ISRO today once again shared the first observations from chase payload on Chandrayaan-3's Vikram lander. The graph shared by ISRO shows the temperature variations of the lunar surface, the near surface at various depths. Uh, this is, remember, the first temperature profile of the lunar south pole and more detailed observations are underway as per ISRO. They've taken to social media to detail the same. In fact, earlier in the day, S. Somnath, the chairman of ISRO, also said that the lander and rover of Chandrayaan-3 spacecraft are very healthy and all five instruments of the spacecraft have been switched on. He added that all experiments will be completed before the 3rd of September, said that the spacecraft has to be tested for different modes in order to have the best picture ever of the moon. Times Now in the meanwhile also spoke to Akash Sinha uh, who developed the navigation software of the spacecraft. Listen in. On a social media platform, we were getting series of queries that how will the uh, Chandrayaan 3 mission will go further, how will the rovers will keep on moving. People were even asking that uh, whether there will be any obstruction in the, on the way of the, uh, the, the machine and it will be stopped by them. To have a better clarity, I'm joined by uh, Professor Akash Sinha, who is the director of uh, Omnipresent Robot Technologies and who's also at the Sir Shivnada University uh, in this department. So thank you for talking to us. People are getting so many queries in their mind. Like yesterday we saw that uh, Chanda Mama and uh, you know Rakhi Raksha Bandhan thing came up. So you can ha imagine the kind of level of curiosity people are having. How will this work? The rovers are there. How will they move, sir? Because people want to know that. Um, first of all, I want to congratulate the entire country on such a big feat, big achievement. And let me just give you a little background why it is such a big deal. Huh? See, for last 50 years, humanity has been wanting to go to moon, but nobody really found anything. And we come with our first moon mission, Chandrayaan-1, and we find water, and we find lots of it. You know, enough water to fill an entire dull lake. And most of this water is at lunar south pole, where we are going. Huh? It's a very tricky place. No country has ever been there. We were the first one and we are the only one right now to have been even landed there safely. Hmm. Why it is such a big deal? Because with so much water, you could even build human colonies there. You could use the water to drink, to grow plants, to uh, create oxygen, to create hydrogen, which could create rocket fuel. You could build a space station over there. So, you know, this is starting a new lunar race. Now you will see everybody again wants to go to moon, huh? Whether it's NASA, it's Japan, it's Israel, UK, Russia, everybody. None of them have gone to this portion. No, none of them have gone to South Pole. South Pole, as I said, is a very tricky place because you get very little sunlight over there. Also, the direct line of communication with Earth is also very limited, huh? So that is, is one of the trickiest part. Now coming to what happens next, now that the, we have landed there safely and our rover has come out. See the very first challenge the rover is, will face is to charge its batteries constantly because... I'll come back to that but I want to know, people would like to know that how you were contacted, how did you manage, you th thought about the software uh, which has been a successful model. See, we've been doing space robotics related research at Shivnada University for a while and also at my startup Omnipresent Robot Technologies. And we've been associated with Chandrayaan mission right from Chandrayaan 1. Huh? So at Chandrayaan 1, we built a module that will help the Chandrayaan orient itself while it's orbiting in the moon. And now in Chandrayaan 2 and 3, we build the software for the rover that will help it navigate on moon surface. Huh? So you, you imagine it's something like this that we have placed a small driverless car on the moon. Huh? I think this is a demo for that, yeah. So this is one of the little demos you can see. Now this car has to drive by itself and it takes two images from two cameras. So you know these two cameras are like two eyes, just like our two human eyes. And this is a very smart thing. Why? Because a lot of countries have big rovers, mm -hmm. heavy laser sensors and all. But we have a very small, very lightweight rover, you know, something like this. You know, we have a little prototype, something of this sort. You know, initially it might look very simple with just two eyes in it. But, yeah. These are two cameras. Yeah, so although this is not exactly camera, but yeah, we can place cam These are actually ultrasonic sensors, but, but on the rover we've used cameras. Huh? But, the, but, the, but the principle is very similar. You have two cameras. And the two cameras see slightly different views and they build a 3D model like one you see over here. Huh? 
Now once this 3D model is built, then the rover can find out, okay, there is a rock in front of me, there is a crater, you know, what is the length of this rock, what is the uh, height of the rock, where the crater is, you know, how far am I from the point I want to go. So all this planning and execution is done completely so independently. and changing its direction also. Yes, yes, on yes. The entire, com entire operation is being done independently by the rover. Huh? We are not really sending any commands. See, when we are building this software, we face this challenge that if we process all this data on Earth, we have to download all the data from Moon to Earth. Mm -hmm. And you know how much time it takes from Moon to download just two photographs? It takes about 10 minutes. You know, it's not like your gigabit internet connection at home. Mm -hmm. So if we can't wait 10 minutes, so we did all the processing on Moon itself. Huh? Okay. And these are some of the innovative ways in which, you know, how we could keep the cost down, still have such good performance. Huh? Another challenge you face on Moon is that there is very little texture. Either things will be ab absolutely black or absolutely white. Either they'll be in shadow region or they'll be lit by sun. Mm. So that also creates a lot of challenge in trying to build a 3D out of it. But we've overcome that challenge and now this software is powering up the Pragyan rover and uh, hopefully you'll see a lot of good results coming so, out. So, uh,